Hey there everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about a new deck that I had planned to actually run myself during the Winter Cup next weekend in Wales, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but uh, I will be casting during that event, so it means that I'm not going to get to run this deck. So what I decided to do instead is to post it online and let you guys have a look at it as well, see what you think, and maybe one of you guys might be running it at Winter Cup instead, who knows? So this deck is going to be based around Yuna, which is the Opus 7 Yuna. Now, when the set first was revealed, I was a little bit iffy about Yuna, and honestly, I will happily admit, as you all know, when I'm wrong, I was wrong. This card is incredibly cool, and I like a lot of the interactions it has. There's actually multiple decks that I would like to build with Yuna, but the one I'm going to go through with you today is going to be a Water Wind deck, which is, I know, very original when it comes to anything FF10 related, but honestly, I think you guys will really like a lot of the synergies that I've presented in this deck. Now don't forget before we get started about all of my social media links in the description box below which include my Patreon page for anyone who would like to support the channel further, big thank you to everybody that already does that, and my Discord chat channel which has now got oh, well over 100 people in it and it's really active and it's been great to see it kind of take off as much as it has. So thank you very much for everyone who joins in and I encourage those of you who haven't to come and join in on the fun. We talk about a lot of different things, not just Final Fantasy TCG, but Final Fantasy in general. Obviously we have Smash Bros now is coming and there's a lot of things that we all kind of interact with and it's just a really, really cool community. So definitely get a check that out if you get a chance. And also don't forget to check in the description box below as well for the ffdex.com link for this particular deck because honestly those guys do an amazing job of building up a database for Final Fantasy TCG and I don't give them enough credit as, and I would love to start turning attention to them more now so definitely check that link out as well. Don't forget to follow the link in the description box as well for my giveaway that is going to be ending at the end of next week for these two Full Art Noctis cards as they're very very rare they're only ever available if you purchase an entire box of Opus 7 so these will be going away next week so definitely check out the link in the description box if you want to enter that. So as you can see in the deck list here, there is a lot of a Final Fantasy X kind of synergistic mode for this deck, and it starts with Yuna. Now Yuna is actually a very, very strong card in combination with other cards. So Yuna can like, reveal the top card of your deck and play it if it's a summon immediately. Now it's important to know that when you do use her ability, you can't leave it revealed and then cast it later. You have to cast it at the time that you reveal it with Yuna. So you have to be careful with that. However, uh, with com in combination with Astrologian, who is one of the backups that are in this deck, you will often plus, as in gate, retain card advantage through either a summon or a backup being revealed. And because there are 29 of those, you're more than 50% chance of being able to either draw a card outright or gain advantages through things like Moogle and Pew Pew. And because the summon is being cast off the top of your deck and not from your hand, that's a card in your hand that you're keeping hold of, and that in this game is absolutely invaluable. And then her resurrection ability, where she could put herself back in your hand, is also really, really powerful if you've got certain other cards out. And because she's an FF10 character, it actually builds a baseline for one of the other key cards in this deck, which is a card we haven't seen in a very long time. And then going into water, a trick that I actually picked up from Toby, um, a last year's world champion and a good friend of mine, um, is using Garnet from the starter deck to play some of the 1 CP summons that we would have been playing from Yuna anyway. But honestly, I've seen him empty uh, like multiple times through streaming and through talking to him as well, where he would empty his hand out except for the Garnet and the resources to be able to play the Garnet play it and then use Pew Pew from the deck so that you still you draw two cards back up again which is really powerful like if a card if a three drop forward came in and said I'm a 5k guy when I enter play draw two cards you, everyone would play her it, it's really powerful and then obviously in combination with Yuna as well it gets a summon into your break zone ready for her resurrection ability and it's just a very very good card for this particular deck but Viking and Layla in here are in here primarily because I want to use them to make Cloud of Darkness stronger. I'll be honest with you, I'm actually starting to go off Layla and Viking a little bit. And I know that sounds crazy to a lot of you, but you have to consider how much deck space that that 
combination takes up. Because you don't just run Layla's and Vikings, you also end up running um, Bran, and you also run Gladiator. Usually you have to then run another standard unit to make those two more viable. So that it, you end up having to run too much deck space just to cater to Layla and Viking. Now they're very, very good cards for certain things. Like I said, they are bodies on the board for the purposes of making Cloud of Darkness better. In Mono Water, they're great at making Cagnazzo stronger. And you know, they are useful for numerous different things or the useful for Refia and things like that. There's a lot of reasons to run them, but honestly, I'm starting to lean more towards using things like Porum as a draw engine because it does kind of fulfill the same requirements while having an ability that's relevant later on while it's in play as well. So I, I like Layla and Viking here because I want to make Cloud of Darkness one of my kill conditions, but there are other options that you could run. And then the last waterfall that I wanted to talk about here is Tidus. Now this is not your regular Tidus, this is the starter deck Tidus. And the reason that I've gone for YRP being all forwards in this deck is because they make Tidus cheaper to play. And not only that, because you're pretty much always going to want to have Yuna out, regardless of anything else that's going on in the deck. He actually makes interactions that are very, very unlike anything else we have in the game. Him having Brave is very, very useful because Water doesn't really have Brave attackers. And then because we have Waka in the deck, who I'll get to in a little while, you know, you can make him stronger as well. And Famfrit, once you have a Tidus and a Yuna out, becomes absolutely backbreaking because you can sacrifice your Yuna to, to the Famfrit as well as killing one of their guys, draw two cards from Tidus's abilities because your forward Yuna has gone to the break zone, and then put her back in, her, back in your hand through her own effect and play her again. It's like, that's a lot of card advantage that you've got on just there. And if you factor in the fact that you can use the Yuna the first time to potentially cast that Framfrey or any of the advantage generating summons in the deck, kill her off, play her again, and then do it again, and then you've got the Astrologians in there as well that can, you can just, you draw so much, it's, it's crazy. I never would have thought to look at Tidus, but honestly, in this deck, I think he's really good. Now, the win portion of the forwards are actually very simple. They are YRP. So I've gone with one copy of um, Searcher Pain, which honestly, I'm debating upping this to two because you need Yuna. As soon as you can get to her, she is invaluable. The deck needs her to be on play. That's why there's three copies of a light card with no S ability, but we have Moogle and Pew Pew to be able to discard extra copies, which isn't a bad thing, because if you discard her, then you can resurrect her later. But I'm also going with two copies of this original starter deck pain because we have kind of like that advantage generators. You could happily switch this out for the Opus 6 pain as well, but because pain and Riku will only interact with each other and they won't affect Yuna because she's not a Gullwing, then that's something to bear in mind as well. If you wanted to run Barts in this deck, like any of the Barts that retain all jobs, then maybe you could do with like having uh, Opus 6 pain and Riku because they are self-sufficient. Um, the reason that I've gone for Opus 6 Riku in this deck rather than Opus 1 Riku is because she's 3 CP mostly, so I wanted to keep my curve at an even level, and she interacts with um, just being herself more than anything. She's a 7k attacker, that's FF10, and therefore makes Tidus cheaper, and also has interactions with Waka, and she can't be targeted by Fasoya, and or anything like ability related. So I think that she's the most useful thing. And then Ishtola is in the deck because it's a win deck, you, you kind of run Ishtola no matter what your win deck is. And mainly because Shantotto can be a real issue for this deck, because you do not want your Yunas getting removed from the game, because that's the only place where you can't do anything with them. So if you can stop that from happening, then that's a massively invaluable thing to have. The nice thing with this deck with the backups is that I think there's actually quite a lot of wiggle room here. You can cater it more to having just more power. I've only gone for one Maria and I've gone for two Waka, but you could easily up that up if you wanted to. But with the water backups, Astrologian is part of the reason I like this deck. Um, a lot of people run Oracle, like I've seen, the, you know, this deck is inspired by some of the Japanese lists I've seen that use Light like Yuna, because that was the first time I looked at it and I was like, maybe this card is better than I thought it was, and I'd like to kind of share that with you all. And honestly, Yuna blew me away when I actually started testing her, because I have a, I've, I've had a little play on Octagon now, which is a program that a lot of people use to unofficially play the game online, and I'm clueless with it, but I, a very big shout out to anyone I've played with over the past couple of weeks, because I, they've had to like, kind of take me through how it all works, and it's been very, very helpful, because it has allowed me to test these decks to a point where I can feel comfortable in showing them to you. Um, Astrologian, if you've got a backup on the top of your deck, then it, which has been revealed by Yuna, you can then just draw it, and it just means that Yuna is much more useful than just revealing a summon off the top of the deck and casting it. 
is a great asset to have. And then Gladiator and Bran are here to cater to Layla and Viking, but as I said, if you don't want to run Layla and Viking, you could change these for a lot of different things. However, I would suggest changing Gladiator at least for a backup that does that breaks itself, so something like Scholar. Um, so that you don't end up with more than five what I like to call sticky backups in here. So in this particular deck, your sticky backups would be Maria, Nono, Brother, Bran, and Astrologian, which is five. So you don't want to do that. But Bran, obviously, if you take her out, then you can change her for something else. And then with the um, Waka that we have in the deck, it synergizes very, very well with, obviously, the Final Fantasy X cast, but not only that, but we have Nono in the deck because it means that um, you can get 2,000 power out of Waka and then 1,000 across the board for every other attacker you've got. Or you can use it for like just buffing the same guy repeatedly if you need to. So you can make Yuna a lot more of a threat that way because she's she's only 6k. Oh, I'll say, I'll say, yeah, she's only 6k. So I had to double check there because I thought maybe she was 5. And you can just keep attacking with her as an 8k power guy, or 9 if you have Maria as well, and then she's actually an offensive threat as well, and then Tidus can get massive, which is really useful, especially considering he has Brave. And then, you know, going into the wind backups other than No-No, Archer is in here because I didn't, I, what I don't want to see is a Fasoya. I, a Fasoya can rip a lot of my board apart, so, and it can kill my Yunus without actually having to expend, resource, expend resources, so I want to be able to keep her alive as much as possible. I also don't want to see a deck that can outpace me, so dealing with things like Semilafina in Earth Wind would be very, very useful, so that's why I've gone with two Archer. White Mage, I honestly think, and I'm so, I was so happy to see it being played at Worlds as well as it was. I'm sure a lot of you who are in the competitive scene have seen the videos of uh, Jason playing White Mage. And it's it's an incredible card. It deals with so many things right now. So Mono Lightning, Zemus hates it. Sid Previa hates it. Mono Water, Lena hates it. Layla hates it. There's a lot of really strong reasons to run this card. Devout hates it in Ice. It's just good. So honestly, a one-off I actually really love. I went with two brother and I went with zero copies of Shinra because I like the three CP curve of the searcher rather than the trade off it being four CP and only searching gull wings and an EX burst. This way it means that I can search for Tidus or Yuna and not just Riku or, uh, or Pain. So I thought that Nona was a little bit more universal to the deck. And then Maria I've already covered, and then Nono, the only other thing I wanted to mention with Nono is the fact that you can use Astrologian more than once. That was the primary reason I put it in there, because I didn't initially have Waka in the deck. I, I, was, I played Oracle instead, which is when you play Oracle, reveal the top two cards, or look at the top two cards of your deck, you can put them on the top or bottom in any order, because I thought that it would synergize really well with Astrologian and Yuna. But the fact is that I found that I didn't need it very often, so like, and it, it's a sticky backup as well. So if you were gonna, if I were gonna take out Gladiator and Bran, I would put Oracle in, and then something else that breaks itself because I think that the extra kind of rigging the top card of your decks is really useful anyway. But I honestly found that I didn't need it very often, so I dropped it for something that was a bit more power related. But Nono being able to reactivate your Astrologian so that you can keep using it is really, really helpful because you can kind of treat it like Sid 2 from um, Opus 6 because you're just literally like picking up CP like it was nothing, and then you being able to activate your backups as you attack is also crazy powerful. And then the summons, there's no monsters in the deck because that's something that we could hit that's not a backup or a summon. There's, so the summons, there's 13 in the deck, which is very high, but there's a good reason for it because we've based the deck around Yuna. And then Leviathan is actually very, very strong in this deck because Leviathan, Moogle and Pew Pew in general, because they're one CP is very, very helpful, especially alongside Nono again, because you can cast it and then you attack and you've literally gotten the cards effect for free. It's the value in this deck is crazy powerful. And then you know, I like Mo Pew Pew more than Moogle because I find it to be a lot more deliberate. If you're casting Moogle, I think that you're kind of drawing to hope, hope for something that you like want so that you can discard. Whereas the Pew Pew, you wouldn't cast Pew Pew unless you knew you had something in your hand already that you didn't want. Not only that, but it has the synergies with Garnet and Yuna as well if you have no hand. Whereas Moogle, you still only end up with one card at the end because you draw two, then discard, as opposed to discard and then draw two. Fanfrit, like I said, is crazy in this deck. We have Layla, it's a good reason for Layla and Viking to be in here because it's a great ward off to your opponent's Fanfrit. And not only that, but the Yuna and Tidus kind of synergy with it is really strong. And I really love that, I just like the card. It's one of the best summons in the game and has been for a while. There's no reason not to run it in here. 
And then for Wind Summons, Valor 4, because it's just really strong. It's arguably the most powerful summon in the game. In fact, both of these Wind Summons are very, very strong. And because we're running Yuna, we would be remiss not to run Valor 4 at this point, because it allows you to get around things that don't target. So like when you go into combat, like I, I found like in testing when I was playing against a lot of mono lightning decks, Illawas would block like a, a Viking, uh, a 3k Viking or a 4k Layla and not worry about it. Or, or they would cast Sheol um, while I'm attacking and then block and then I can just cast Valor 4 and finish her off and then reactivate all of my backups because I have a Yuna out and it was really useful. And Diabolos has synergies with Cloud of Darkness and is just a generally very powerful card and also reactivates all of your backups. So a lot of the stuff that you're playing is basically free. So in conclusion, the idea of the deck is just to kind of build up advantage way faster than your opponent because everything you play is really cheap and through Yuna, Astrologian, Moogle, Pew Pew, Tidus, Famfret, Viking, Layla, Searchers, you're just drawing cards constantly. And then your finishing moves are um, Tidus and Cloud of Darkness primarily, but you can use Riku and Pain with Waka and Nono to make an offensive force as well. So thank you ever so much for watching. That's all it is for today. Do try out Yuna, I really encourage you, because it was definitely one that flew under the radar. When we all looked, I wasn't the only person that looked at that card and I was like, well, I don't really like revealing information to my opponent if it's not a summon. I don't like the fact that she takes up a light slot when Yuri's so good. It's like, she's honestly very, very underrated. Although I think that people overseas have seen her potential quicker than a lot of us have, uh, certainly me. And now that I've played her, I think she's a wonderful, wonderful card. So, like I said, go and experiment with this deck, try it out in different ways, let me know in the comments below how you've played Yuna if you have at all, and then tell me what you think of this deck and any others that I may have built. So hopefully I will see a lot of you next week at Winter Cup for Wales. There's already a hundred, the, the pre-registration's already capped out at 180 players, which honestly, the week, week before Christmas is crazy, and it goes to show how popular this game still is. And it's still growing. Last year, I believe we had 120, and this year we've got 180. So this, it, it's definitely getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So honestly, go and preach the gospel that is Final Fantasy TCG to your local game store and show them, because I will be making a vlog next week, because I know I didn't make one for Worlds, but I'm not making the same mistake again. And I will be making a vlog for Winter Cup, so definitely go out there and show people that video when it comes out, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll speak to you all again soon. See you now.